Alex Jones, founder of the extremist conspiracy theory peddling digital brand InfoWars, is an irredeemably bad person. For his own personal benefit, he has victimized the grieving parents of children who were killed in school shootings. He has deliberately stoked fear among his followers in order to sell them hundreds of millions of dollars in snake oil. He has promoted insane conspiracy theories about everything from 9-11 to the Oklahoma City bombing to COVID to the moon landing. In the 25 years since he launched his brand, he has proved again and again that there is no lie he will not embrace, no moral line he will not cross in his pursuit of fame, fortune, and influence. And somehow, bafflingly, karma has never really come around for him. Until now. The satirical news site The Onion has just won an auction to acquire the media outlet InfoWars. Right wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. The Onion's bid was backed by the families of eight victims of the Sandy Hook school shooting, the very people that Jones defamed. Yes, as truly befits a monster of pure unbridled hubris. Alex Jones's comeuppance is not just to have his legacy of greed, ignorance, and hatred taken from him. It is to have it publicly pilloried, mocked, and burned to the ground at the hands of the very people he hurt the most. And with the help of a plucky, irreverent media brand that's been jamming its thumb into the eyes of bastards like Jones for more than 35 years. In this episode, we talk to the CMO of the satirical fake news publication, The Onion, about why they chose to buy Alex Jones's company out of bankruptcy, what they plan to do with it, and how they single-handedly pulled off one of the greatest pranks in history on one of the very worst people in the world. I'm Dusty Weiss from PodCamp Media. This is Lead Balloon, a podcast about incredible stories from the worlds of PR, marketing, and branding told by the well-meaning communications professionals who lived them. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure that you're following Lead Balloon in your favorite podcast app and make sure to check out PodCamp Media on YouTube where you can find video versions of this and some of our other episodes. We are joined today by Leela Brilson, the Chief Marketing Officer of The Onion, the nation's leading satiric news publication and a legendary institution in the world of comedy and media. She is a social marketing strategist with experience at leading brands, including Netflix, TikTok, Bumble, and the Walt Disney Company. In addition to having served as a leader in the publishing industry at outlets like Hearst Magazines, Playboy, and Nylon. So, Leela Brilson, thank you for joining us here on Lead Balloon. Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. We are really excited about this one. Again, I have been a fan of The Onion for 25 years now, mm -hmm. all the way back to when I was like an awkward sort of wannabe edgy teenager and I could snag a free copy off the newsstand next to the Cinnabon at the mall food court. So in all that time, there have been some classic jokes published in The Onion, but I have never laughed as hard or as long as I did last week when I heard on NPR that The Onion was buying InfoWars. What has been the reaction? Oh, my gosh. Um, Dusty, the, the reaction has been incredible. Uh, you know, I, first of all, I mean, the positive reaction has far outweighed the negative. Um, people just finding this to be a quote-unquote epic troll, a cosmic joke, you know, satire in, in its most powerful form. Uh, and just something that has provided kind of a, a bookend to what has been a really upsetting uh, uh, chapter in the media landscape. And for um, uh, the families we're working with, um, a truly tragic chapter in their lives. Um, well, and, and that's just it. Like as much as it is hilarious, it is also wonderfully and appropriately fitting yeah. uh, for what we're dealing with here. Uh, let's set the stage a little bit for how this was able sure. to happen. Last June, it was announced that Alex Jones would be forced to liquidate his assets via Chapter 7 bankruptcy. That because he was sued by the families of victims of the Sandy Hook school shooting in 2012, which killed more than two dozen people, most of them grade school aged children and jones did what exactly uh well he kept saying it was a hoax um he says now that he never said it was a hoax and he never talked about these people um but you can look up compilations of him saying it was a hoax over and over and over again 
And even more upsetting, as that is deeply upsetting, have, having someone discredit your extreme anguish in that way, um, he sent, and I, I can understand this now on the other side of this, he sent um, a very rabid uh, listenership, viewership, after um, families going through the worst things in their lives. Um, and, you know, the thing about InfoWars is that it, it, it purports to tell the true story, the story underneath the story. So a lot of folks feel like they're getting, you know, the people who are kind of um, uh, absorbed into this kind of web of untruths or lies um, are, uh, are, are feeling like they're getting the real story. So they they take it upon themselves to to you know i know i know what you've done as as a kind of uh, ongoing way that they've they kind of have treated any kind of slights towards alex and so i could only imagine what the sandy hook families have had to deal with at his unwitting or witting behest. Um, right, the abuse, so, yeah. the stalking, uh, the absolute terror that these terror, families yeah. were put through. Again, in the very, very bottom of the worst kind of grief that any family can be put through. And and a group of these family members banded together mm -hmm. and sued Alex Jones for defamation uh, because he called the whole thing a hoax because he called them liars. Uh, they won their suit and he was yeah. found liable for $1.5 B billion in damages, yeah. which he now has to make good to these families. Um, you said something there that I'm going to key on for a second because I think it's it's part of what's really brilliant about The Onion. You said that Alex Jones and Infowars, they purport to tell the truth, to expose the hidden truth. Now, The Onion is a publication that has never purported to tell the truth. It is designed to be as outrageous and as over the top as possible. And yet, in its own way, it is exposing truths in that way. Because after Sandy Hook, after Uvalde, after Marjorie Stoneman Douglas, after Virginia Tech, after every single mass shooting for, what, the last 20 years? Uh, the Onion has run a story, but it's not silly like your other stuff. It's not trying to get laughs. It's trying to make a point because while the names, the places, the numbers change, the story is exactly the same every time. And so is the headline. There is no way to prevent this, says Only Nation, where this happens regularly. 37 times. 37 times we've run that. What does it say to you that you've had to run that story 37 times? Uh, it says it's true. This is the only nation that this uh, ha uh, purports to happen um, uh, regularly. And it's extremely upsetting um, every single time. Um, uh, and, you know, it is unfortunately our most popular and most landed on page. The comedy slash culture critic Josh Gondelman has identified this as one of the most tragic pieces of art in the last 20 years. And I think that he's correct. So certainly The Onion has a record of making its voice heard on this topic. Um, and for people who may not be familiar with The Onion, it is worth pointing out for a publication, the bread and butter of which is being irreverent and pointed and even silly. It's certainly not gobbling up other publications. So I am dying to know then what prompted this radical departure from business as usual. And specifically, was it actually the tweet? Uh, not the tweet, but wh whatever it is that we're calling these posts on Blue Sky? Skeets. Skeets? Yeah, we're calling them skeets. <laughs> I do not consent to that. <laughs> yeah, no, nobody has. We got to do better. To this. Yeah. So... Let's take a step back a little bit. The radical departure actually happened in April slash May when the group I'm a part of, which is myself, Ben Collins, and a um, tech product um, uh, impresario named Danielle Sterle got together. Well, that happened a bit earlier, us getting together and deciding to free The Onion from kind of its shackles of um, private equity. We saw an opportunity, a brand that was in a, a lot of stress and a lot of turmoil being rated for this kind of brand awareness, its incredible social channels, the bangers that it's produced years after year after year. 
um, and, you know, forced to run slideshows, pivot away from video because they were so dependent on impression-based ads. And we worked with a like-minded investor who um, uh, helped us acquire it. Um, and for the first time in over 20 years, The Onion was independent. Um, and the joke is we were like, we're not looking to acquire any more places. Like, we want to work here for the rest of our lives. And the truth is, this was supposed to be this kind of like nice little business, if you will, um, where we were uh, helping The Onion achieve kind of that, reachieve that status of not just doing great headlines that you love, but the books like the Our Dumb Century or, you know, relaunching ONN or, or Onion News Network or any of the video spaces. Um, so we and, and bringing the paper back, which was um, something that we did not understand was such a desired uh, uh, outcome. So we were heading down this path. And uh, when the bankruptcy was announced, yes, Ben made a joke and made a joke on Blue Sky. Blue Somebody Sky. actually tweeted, yeah. uh, tweeted at him, skeeted at him, whatever. The Onion has the opportunity to do the funniest thing ever. And, um, and he posted back the Elon Musk meme of mm, looking into this. it. Looking into this, yeah. Um, I don't know what happened. Ben is incredibly connected. He comes from the space of reporting and media. and The everyone... new editor, uh, or, or the new CEO, CEO of The Onion, yeah. rather. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, uh, yeah, my, my partner in all of these things, even though he's CEO and I'm CMO. Um, uh, no, he's incredibly well connected and incredibly um, beloved and well known, especially in the disinformation space. So I, I once again, I don't know the full exact order of things. I'm sure I was told it at some point. I am a new mom, so my brain does weird things. Um, I feel you right there. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, and so he came in and was like, what, uh, what if we bought InfoWars? And I was like, haha, what if? And then he was like, no, what if we bought InfoWars? He was not the one to make the first move. I'm not exactly sure exactly what happened. I can't really speak to that. But I do know that he managed to bring together a coalition of the folks from Sandy Hook, our legal team, their legal team, and have a conversation. And then through that, we decided to do an incredible uh, ad partnership. Um, uh, and to be very clear, um, every town is not necessarily interested in, you know, they're not in the, involved in the ownership. They're not involved in the acquisition at all. But they do have that ongoing, uh, you know, legitimacy in the space. Um, and we have this ongoing legitimacy in the space through this a sad, tragic art performance. I can't, you know, um, uh, that we've, we, we discussed. And we came up with a partnership that is, you know, based on the earned media around this, based on the owned media around this, based on the fact that, you know, we have the ability to really um, build a narrative that's really compelling and help them reach new audiences. Their audience is very female. It is very, um, you know, upper millennial. Um, we have a very young male audience. And, uh, you know, the truth is, is that a lot of these things are served better with humor, with a, a wink and a nod or with awareness. And we sat down with them and we said, hey, like, let's stream up some really cool stuff, some stuff that's never been done before. This may be the one of the more interesting, quote unquote, sponsored content buys I've ever seen. Um, uh, to say the, the very least, it's it's incredible. It's unprecedented. It's never been done. They get an opportunity to reach a new audience with their very important message. You folks at The Onion essentially get the opportunity to not only pull off one of the greatest pranks of all time, but to burn to the ground the legacy of a bastard who absolutely has it coming. And so I want to get into exactly what your plans are for the InfoWars brand. InfoWars is an outlet where for 25 years, conspiracy theories have been churned out. Millions of people have been scammed and misled and innocent lives have been destroyed. What does a publication like The Onion do with that kind of IP? Well, you know, there's two things. The first thing is that we talk about the onion as a, a business, and then we can talk about the onion as an editorial voice. The onion, the business will, you know, is very excited about, you know, operating in a more influencer 
um, a, you know, personality driven space that is, you know, in the TikTok conspiracy world and Joe Rogan's like the things that are, have become very ubiquitous. The Onion calls them refs, as in references that you reference. Um, in the classic Onion is like the New York Times, CNN, cable news. And those things are not the cutting edge of news anymore. They're still uh, a part of the media scape, mm-hmm. but there's this other force that is gaining an increased share in mm-hmm. public attention span. And this gives, I, to us, I think it gives us an opportunity to integrate in that space without diminishing what The Onion is as a brand. Um, you know, what is our Joe Rogan take? Uh, the Onion tends to 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 kind of envision itself as kind of above the fray and this omnipresent, um, massive conglomerate that is like too uh, elevated to think about. You know, the the Tate brothers or whatever bizarre uh, thing is going on on TikTok, whether it's people <laughs> doing raw milk or thinking sunscreen is a inside joke, inside job or whatever. Um, and so. That has, you know, served the onion really well, but it has uh, kept it in this space that it has owned so, so uh, exceptionally, um, but has not necessarily allowed it to jump into those places because it's, it would be so disruptive to what the onion is as brand. So we're excited to kind of use Infowars to kind of expand in that multimedia place and to meet that moment of like those very personality driven spaces. Uh, 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 the the yes, Alex Jones, but also you know all of the different uh, faces that we see in this kind of more fringe. Uh, media uh, environment, both on the right and the left. Just you know, there's there's plenty of commentary to be had. And then the onion as a business is, of course, completely out. You know, we we in in world we are owned by Bryce Te- Tetradon of Global Tetrahedron. Global Tetrahedron. Com- yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have no idea how many pr- press requests we got for Bryce. Um, uh, <laughs> Still, uh, yeah. Um, uh, he's uh, uh, it, you know people want to travel with Bryce. Um, uh, and so, uh, out of world, we understand that this is kind of also protecting the brand of the onion, which, you know, we're not, like, everyone will, it will be a long time until the cable news ref, um, loses relevancy, even to younger people. They identify it as still a, a serious news delivery mechanism. This kind of allows us to pr- keep the onion doing what it does best and then be a little more, uh, scrappy respond to trends more than um, the the publication um, has done in the past. You're essentially you're evolving to meet the moment, and for a publication that started off as a print publication, mm-hmm. staying relevant in whatever the heck age of media this is that we're living in now. And I love it. And, and you did reference uh, Global Tetrahedron and the statement that was put out announcing the acquisition. And I did, I just wanted to call back to that. It was a statement in the character of Bryce Tetra, whatever the heck, uh, the CEO of Global Tetrahedron. My favorite quote from the thing, Infowars has shown an unswerving commitment to manufacturing anger and radicalizing the most vulnerable members of society, values that resonate deeply with all of us at Global Tetrahedron, which Chef's so kiss. A- another great moment is when they hint that they will stop the sale of Infowars stockpile of anti-aging nutrition supplements so they can give them all to their CEO and he can live forever. But it does raise an interesting point that you're not just getting a media channel here. You're getting all kinds of assets. What are you actually going to do with, as a for instance, a line of dubious nutritional supplements? You know, that's the... Ben made this mistake on another podcast and said, we don't know, send us your ideas. And our uh, (laughs) inbox became filled. Um, But that is something we're trying to figure out, right? Like we want to make sure that whatever we're doing, you know, that we continue to work closely with the families to make sure that we're not um, propagating kind of the extremism that put them in the place that they are now. Honestly, I, I can say on the record here, I don't know. We're not, we, that was not, 
Um, uh, that was not a bit part of our business plan here. Um, uh, we want to handle it responsibly. But what a turn of events. I like texted my family. I, I, I like guess guess you guys know what you're getting for Christmas, you know, <laughs> boxes and boxes uh, enough to fill a garage. Plus. Uh, another facet of this that's really interesting to me, because, of course, there's all this comedic potential of this acquisition, but there's also the opportunity to do some real good as well. For instance, I would imagine the InfoWars email mailing lists are abundant. Are you exploring ways to leverage those email lists to try to de-radicalize some of the people that have been drinking from this propaganda fire hose for 20 years? You know, that's a good question. It's interesting because the, uh, t typically email, email lists would fall into the space of the CMO, right? Um, uh, I think with this, though, they need to be handled extremely sensitively. Um, and so I don't feel extremely comfortable speaking on that. I don't think we will have a tremendous amount of people who are willing to listen, but you never know. So I think the email lists are, are an interesting conversation. But I don't think that they're going to be an efficient marketing channel like our current email address lists are. Um, so that is a that is a question that is continuing to evolve. So you've got the opportunity to do some good. You've got the opportunity to do some brilliant comedy and satire. Mm -hmm. Those are all great. But the purchase of Infowars, in addition to being the funniest joke yet. It is also a brilliantly conceived publicity stunt in a lot of ways. I mean, a quick glance at Google Trends shows search volume for The Onion spiked plus 400 oh, percent last week. Are there any other metrics that you're tracking or planning to track or anything that you can share with us as far as just the immediate brand impact for The Onion? Gosh, I mean, incredible brand impact. Uh, well, our number, I mean, the number one thing is, is do people reach into their wallets? And Dusty, I will tell you equivocally, yes. Um, I can't give you numbers. Our subscriber list, people who are paying for the Onion membership, has grown a significant amount, amount I will certainly say, in the double digits um, uh, it, it, since this has happened, um, which means people are reaching into their wallets and saying, we want to support you. Uh, which is really exciting. That's another metric we're 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 um, considering. Call this earned media, which is very exciting. Um, you know, it's interesting because I don't know how this is going to fare in the partnership space. I I don't want to say ads because we're really moving away from ads. Um, but I do uh, in terms of like traditional um, display advertisement. But, um, you know, I don't know what, like, Disney is going to think about uh, us purchasing InfoWars and if that's a brand they want to be next to, especially I think marketers everywhere are going to be thinking about, does it make sense to align yourself with, quote unquote, progressive um, companies after um, the election? Uh, I would say that people still are very values based. Um, so there's pros and cons to that. And for anybody listening... We're open for business. Um, I'm very curious to see um, how this uh, uh, reflects in um, the people who are excited about partnering with us um, because the, the eyes are on us. You know, the enthusiasm is there. We are a brand that can deliver, um, but is being in the crosshairs of a hateful misinformation peddler negative for you. Right. Yeah. Well, just in terms of the subscription thing, I certainly know a lot of people that I've talked to personally over the last year uh, who maybe weren't even aware that The Onion was back in print form and that you could get a monthly copy of it for just $99 a year. Certainly, it's something that we could use in our green room here at PodCamp Media. And so we'll look forward to uh, getting ink on my hands again here for the first time in a while. Uh, you yourself, as you mentioned earlier, you're relatively new to The Onion. Mm -hmm. Is this the sort of project that you expected to be working on eight months into the new job here? Can I tell you, honestly... Is it InfoWars? No. Were we expecting to do some crazy stuff? Yes. Because The Onion has the chops and the writers, and we haven't really talked about the writers, and and our company is mostly creatives. I mean, it's with Danielle, Ben, and I, and like one or two other people are business affairs and out-of-world conversation, but there is a strong writing team there. 
and they are up for the task. And we knew that in order for the onion to succeed, we would have to unshackle them from these kind of like more onerous goals that um, uh, a a company that was entirely interested in um, getting the revenue back via, you know, selling off the bits and parts would not let them do. So we knew that we were in for a ride. And we wanted to be. We wanted to be in for a ride. We wanted to be in, you know, give these incredible humorists the, oh, they would murder me if I, they heard me call them humorists, um, these incredible writers and um, comedians or satirists, um, the space to tell more jokes in more places. And again, to continue to be more relevant in an evolving media scape, yeah. certainly The Onion is unshackled, certainly as someone who has followed The Onion for multiple decades now, uh, since I was a teenager ramming around Madison, Wisconsin, where it all started. Uh, it's uh, it's delightful for me to get to see it. But last question that I have for you personally, Lila, what does it mean to you personally to get to jam your own thumb into Alex Jones's eyeball? Oh, jeez. You know, I'm going to say it's it, it probably means a lot more to somebody like Ben who's been in the disinformation space. Me, I've been in like lifestyle media and entertainment and I haven't had his work directly affect mine in a really long time. What I am going to say instead, I think is a little more of a big picture. I I lived in New York for 10 years. I spent 5 years in LA doing the, you know, Netflix of it all. Um and then I just moved back to Chicago where I'm from and where the onion is now. So I'm speaking to you from Chicago, Illinois, um right down the street from my office, the onion office. And I think that there's something really powerful about a new mom and a handful of scrappy writers um, coming together and, you know, Danielle Sterle, who lives with her cat, um, Stefan, I'd like to describe us as ragtag, perhaps, um, group being able to um, organically and not with the help of like George Soros and, you know, the New World Order, jab a thumb into a really toxic space. Uh, um, and it, it, it's something that you don't see a lot. Like you don't see uh, uh, justice served in uh, uh, from the bottom up. And I really think this is a bottom up opportunity. This is something I think for anybody who feels like their small independent business can change the fabric of the space that they're in, that is where I feel like the, the win has been for me. Well, I, I hope that in the middle of this whirlwind, you have had a chance to just sit and soak in the W here because I don't use the word heroes lightly, Leela, but in this world, it is very seldom, far too seldom that we get to see someone so vile get so completely owned and embarrassed in such a public forum. And this is a year that has been especially, it's been especially, and I know that working yeah. in the media is a grinding, nonstop, lunch pail job. I know that writing comedy on any kind of a cadence can be a soul crushing and exhausting exercise. And so I just want you and the rest of the leadership at The Onion and everyone on staff to just have a moment of complete and total satisfaction yeah. knowing that you have done something truly epically karmic. It, it's art. And yeah. so on behalf of a grateful nation, thank you. Thank you for thank doing you. what you do. Leela Brilson, CMO of The Onion. And thank you for joining us on Lead Balloon. Thank you for having me, Dusty. The Connecticut Democrats with The Onion newspaper uh, bought us. Thank you for tuning in here on Lead Balloon. We tell the stories of strategic communication heroes facing long odds and learning something from it. So we hope to see you back here in this feed again sometime soon. Follow us in your favorite podcast app. Lead Balloon is produced by PodCamp Media, where we provide branded podcast production solutions for businesses. Our podcast studios are located in the heart of beautiful downtown Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We work with brands all over North America to help them launch and build podcasts that work check out our website, podcampmedia.com. Music for this episode by Ghost Beats. And until the next time, folks, thanks for listening. I'm Dusty Weiss.